get back on the top of the box. Oh! Takes Anderson down. down! I'm Aaron Fletcher. I'm Christian Craig. I'm Hunter Lawrence. Joe Shimoda. I'm Cameron McAdoo. I'm Justin Brayton. Hey, I'm Marvin Muskan. I'm Malcolm Stewart. I'm Jiren Ferrangis. And I choose Ojo. And I choose Ojo. I choose Ojo. I choose Ojo. This Roto Motor React is brought to you by Ogeo. The racing capital of the world did indeed have some great racing, but ultimately it was overshadowed by riders making contact, riders hitting the dirt, and riders hitting each other. But the AMA gets the final blow of the weekend, hitting Justin Barsha in both the standings and the pocket early Sunday morning following his move on Jason Anderson. With 13 and a half minutes to go in the 450 main, Barsha makes a mistake in the whoops, which allows Anderson to suck up behind him and cut to the inside for the pass. El Hombre definitely runs Bam Bam high here to secure the pass, but everyone in the press box with me agreed that Anderson had a near-perfect execution, grabbing the lead in this moment. But just a few seconds later, Anderson takes his usual line after the triple coming into the start straight, and Barsha instead opts for the inside lane, running long into the corner, connecting with Anderson to take the lead back and leaving Jason on the ground in his wake. Barsha immediately puts his hand up as to signal it being an accident, but Ricky Carmichael wasn't buying it, moments later saying, I'm going to go ahead and say it. Barsha is going for it. Meant to do that. He looks back, puts his hand up like, hey, sorry, maybe I didn't mean to do that, but he knew exactly where Anderson was going. He knew where he was going as well. Barsha played it cool on the podium when asked about the incident, adding, Man, it was wild. The pass on Jason, I'm just, uh, yeah, I'm going to have to watch it, but uh, it's one of those corners where if you leave it open, I wasn't going very fast, checked up, and he hit the side of me, and I don't want to see anyone go down. That's not really the thing I'm into racing where people will say different, but... Yeah, I didn't want to see him go down. That's a bummer. But With Borsha being on probation for his incidents earlier this season, even though the move wasn't as egregious of a takeout like we've already seen this season, it was a foregone conclusion that the governing body would at least take a look at the situation and likely talk with both riders after. In the post-race press conference, Barsha spoke at length about his move on Jason, calling it a racing incident and insisting he would do it all over again. It was a racing incident and like I wouldn't change anything. I'd do the same thing I did. I took the line and obviously he didn't see me. So yeah, what am I supposed to do? We're racing for money and it wasn't, I don't think it was dirty. Like I went in there, those corners are difficult. You you go for it or you don't go for it. And I seen an opportunity, I went for it. I wasn't going hundred miles per hour trying to clean the guy out. It was on my brakes. He could have turned down harder or he didn't see me. It's, like I said, I wouldn't, I wouldn't change anything. So yeah. The AMA took over four hours to deliberate about the situation before deciding that the move was worth taking action on and confirming the results of the race. They then followed that up with a tweet over seven hours after the checkers flew, announcing that decision to the public. Breaking, Justin Barsha has received a three-point penalty and a $3,000 fine from the AMA for his move on Justin Anderson in the 450SX main event. This feels like a relatively lenient penalty for a guy that was already on probation and further compounds our confusion about penalties in Supercross as the AMA has not exactly been consistent when dealing with collisions this year. The $3,000 is probably something Barsha could fish out of his couch, but it is worth noting that all money collected from fines is actually used to help fund the Alpine Stars medical team, and I'm fully in support of them collecting any money in this way. The biggest losers this weekend are both Jason Anderson, who suffered a 12-point swing in the championship from where he sat before the incident, and the three-point penalty does nothing to help him recover what was lost, but also the fans with an already crumbling championship battle taking another blow. Three points drop Barsha from a clear-cut runner-up in the championship to being tied with the man he sent to the deck, ironically, exactly 51 points behind championship leader Eli Tomac, meaning Eli could sit out two entire races and still be well within championship contention. I think we as fans deserve more than just a single long sentence in a tweet to explain what is going through the minds of the competition committee when they are levying championship altering decisions about incidents on the track. With multiple riders on probation and a record number of penalties already levied this season, in addition to some questionable no calls, it would be great to have a legitimate explanatory press release from the AMA, not just about the penalty itself, but also how they arrived at their decision. If we want to be taken seriously as a sport along the other big ball sports and more prestigious racing series, the change needs to start at the top. The only reason I can think of that the AMA is not thorough with their penalties is because it allows them to be more flexible with how they handle future ones. A thorough explanation would set a precedent that AMA would then be forced to answer to, which would be simply inconvenient for them. 
Do you think the AMA should be more transparent with their penalties? And do you think we should have more official and easily found press releases about these types of decisions? Let me know in the comments. And while you're down there, hit the like button and be sure to subscribe to Rotomoto for more breaking news and analysis like this. If you value the content I put out, please consider joining me on Patreon for just about $1 per week. You help me continue to make this content for you and are also entered to win race used and autograph memorabilia from your favorite riders. Two lucky winners this month will take home Robbie Wageman jerseys for the month of March. Thanks as always for watching Rotomoto. My name is Donnie. Keep it pinned to the weekend.